putting together the 8990 project was probably the same as, as everyone else uh, had problems with raising funding. Um, we thought that being an all-female crew would be you know, such a great PR thing that people would be breaking our door down to sponsor a bunch of women, but that's not exactly how they saw it. They saw it as something that they could be blamed for if, if we died or drowned or something, that you know, they would be held responsible. So raising the funds was unbelievably hard and uh, it, we just had to keep going and keep going and keep going. And you know, there were times where we had to dismantle the project and then put it back together again when we got more money, but we had, just an extraordinary amount of support from so many people, uh, donations, people turn up at my house um, and just randomly say, how can I help? And so Maiden did create this very special magic, uh, which I think she has the capability to do and I think which she's doing again, uh, but definitely the funding and, and for most other projects as well, I would imagine. Maiden is still the most successful all-female crew to do the Whitbread stroke Volvo is because we put the project together ourselves. Um, I think uh, some of the all-female crews that have followed um, have had maybe a bit of a disadvantage because they've been sort of an afterthought. Uh, there's been one boat and then the guys have said, oh, let's give the other boat to, to the girls. And they haven't had the build-up time that we had or the training time that we had. They haven't put the boat together like we did. So I think really it was the fact that we started it, we put it together, we managed it, we structured it, we raised the money, we designed the boat, we did everything for us to, to win. And I think that was a massive advantage for us. And, you know, I think that the new rule change in the Volvo is a fantastic thing because I also think that you know, the race has become more competitive and women have got to be allowed to get out there on the water, on the boats, uh, to get the experience, to, to make sure that they can um, participate and be competitive. Sadly, we won't be able to do the race from Gothenburg to The Hague with the Legends because we won't be launched until the 28th of June. Uh, so we won't be in time for that, uh, but what we would like is to invite the legends that are uh, at that regatta to come and race with us in the Solent or at Cowles, uh, which we just thought would be a lot of fun, something else for us all to do. Um, so we won't be on the start line in, in Gothenburg, unfortunately. When we got the survey done of Maiden, um, Right about this time last year actually, we, we'd raised all the funds, we were ready to buy her, um, we'd, you know, we'd, we'd seen pictures of what she was like but we sent a surveyor over to have a look and there were some warning signs and you couldn't do a full survey um, and you couldn't scan the hull so we did take a bit of a, a risk. Um, when we brought her back and took her out of the water and started shot blasting and really saw the damage the electrolysis had done to the aluminium hull. Uh, there were a few quite worrying moments, um, especially when one of us stuck our finger through the hull. Um, and uh, we, we had no idea that, that parts of the hull, not even through electrolysis, but were just so thin. And, and were probably that thin when we sailed her around the world um, in 89.90. So having these great, I mean, they're just this great team of, of aluminium welders uh, working on Maiden has just been phenomenal because we know that when we put her back in the water, the um, corroded uh, metal will be replaced and she'll be stronger than ever before. <laughs>